Hi everybody, we are Mike and Brenda Baker and today you're going to see that we have a different background and you're going to hear a lot of background noises. That's because we're actually in Savannah, Georgia recording this and we're here on a trip basically to vacation but also find a different place to move because we are tired of Montana weather. Uh, and since we're empty nesters now, we are able to do this. And so we thought it was fitting to talk about empty nest subjects while we're on an empty nest trip, looking for a new place to live because we will be leaving all of our kids back in Montana when we do leave. So with that, today's uh, topic is survive and thrive in your empty nest lifestyle. Okay, so surviving and thriving in your emptiness lifestyle. So things you gotta things you gotta remember. Number one on this list is don't dwell. All right, there are a lot of parents who really focus on child-centered parenting throughout their marriage. Okay, and we've talked about it. We'll probably talk about it some more. And what that means is that you focus more on the kids than you did your marriage. Now, some of you are thinking, "Well, Mike, that's what we that's what we had to do." No, that's not what you had to do. That's what you chose to do. Okay. It was easier to deal with your kids than it was your spouse. And now here you are. So I'm not going to get into all the dynamics right there because we, we will in other videos, but don't dwell. Don't dwell on the fact that your kids are gone. Don't dwell on the fact that there's not a buffer. Step up. All right. Step up and decide that now is the time because we did, maybe you didn't take the time to build the relationship, which is why 30 year marriages fall apart, by the way. Okay. Decide that you're not going to dwell on the past, you're going to move into the future. Now, one thing I will say before I move on to number two. So this is our first major trip since our youngest son got married in January. Now, granted, we've had all the COVID baloney and all the riots and protests and, and in Montana, we're minimally affected, okay, as compared to some of you guys. But that doesn't change the fact that we, for 24 years, almost 25, have actively worked on our relationship, yes? Yeah. Okay, actively, weekly date nights. We sat down every time I came home from work, except when I was in Iraq, obviously, <laughs> and had what we called couch time, where we would talk and the kids weren't allowed to interrupt. We actively worked on our relationship. So here we are, we drove Montana <laughs> to Savannah, Georgia, and we had problems. Yep. Okay, I'm we not did. gonna sit here, yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and say we didn't. And they were fairly decent sized problems, okay? Arguments if you wanna really get into it. But I can tell you right now that we were able to move through those because of all the work we did for the last 24 years. Those systems are already in place. Now we chose, why are we moving? Because we choose not to dwell on the fact that the kids are all done and on their own and doing their own thing and, and forget who mom and dad are half the time. Okay, <laughs> don't dwell. Sorry, yeah. there's yeah, bugs. Yeah, it is Georgia. So, I guess the biggest thing that I want to say about this whole thing is that if you are a blended family and you've you've blended your family and now your kids are gone, it might be a little scary, a little bit more scary even than regular couples because you've never had time just you and your spouse. And that is really, really intimidating. And honestly, a couple of our little tips that we had on the way here were kind of because of the COVID stress and not knowing who is requiring masks and what areas are safe yeah. and which are rioting. You know, it, it was it was stressful, and I let it get the best of me, to be honest. Um, so, if you're in that situation where you and your spouse haven't had the time alone prior to children, um, then just understand that we feel it too. Uh, we, we sit before you today, totally on good terms. Uh, yeah. We figured out our issues, but there have been a couple and that's okay. Every yeah. couple is, is, if they're honest, is gonna say, yeah, we've had a few problems. Now, don't judge. I am having messy hair, don't care. I've got a sunburn. I'm like looking different than usual. Sorry, we had fun today. Yeah, and I don't have glasses on because I dropped a wrench on my face <laughs> under a sink. Cause I, as I told you, I'm a, a plumber and my glasses are off getting fixed. So, <laughs> so I had to wear my contacts. 
but be that as it may. So don't dwell is the first one, but the second one runs right into that. And that's the couples coming to Jesus talk. Now, some of you older, older couples know what I'm talking about. And when Brenda talks about you never had any time to yourselves, you're like, well, no. Okay, what we mean is you started typically instant family. Yep. Kids immediately. There was no get to know each mm -hmm. other and then have kids. There was, here we are. Like with us, it was us and three kids, boom. And then we had two more. Yep. So this is the first time we've had no obligations to any of those kids, no obligations, just no ob real obligations outside of each other. Cool. And let me just say, it's really, really awesome. I, I love our boys, Mike loves our boys, but this time has been absolutely amazing for so many reasons. Yeah. And our relationship has changed and grown since our youngest moved out in, in January. It, it is amazing how quickly we just got right into I mean honestly one of the things about this trip that was really exciting was the fact that I didn't have to worry about what our youngest was doing because as a mom every time we were gone and he was at home I was like okay I need to talk to him I need to do this he's out on his own doing his own thing now I don't have to worry about it and it's been a huge stress relief for me in the fact that I don't have anybody I have to take care of but him. Okay. He's easy. So with that, then back to, and she's right. Okay, so I there's, so the couple's coming to Jesus talk. What is that? The coming to Jesus talk is the no bull crap talk. <laughs> it's a no bull crap talk where you can both sit down and talk to each other and say exactly what's on your mind. Now, men, we tend to be somewhat abrasive when we get straight to the point. And ladies, I'm going to tell you right now, in this particular case, it's probably a good idea for you to let him be somewhat abrasive and get it out. Yeah. Because otherwise he's gonna to have to sugarcoat it and then it's gonna come up again because he wasn't really able to tell you exactly how he felt because he didn't feel you could take it. Mm. Be that person just the one time. I'm not talking let him do it all the time and dudes, make sure that you're listening up. You don't get, this is not a free pass for every conversation after this. One time you need to have a coming to Jesus where, hun, I feel this way about things. Okay, and the other one is like, well, hon, I feel this way about things. And then you come into the middle without getting all butt hurt and without getting all, all bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. And you say, what can we do to fix this? Or how can we make it better? Because it's already good. Okay, because there's going to be a number of you out there whose relationships aren't bad. And we're not saying every relationship is bad, but most are, unfortunately. So especially if you were a child-centered parent, you guys really mm -hmm. have a lot of work to do. Uh, I will tell you right now that if you look at each other and say, well, I'm just not interested in you, you are part of the problem, both of you, yep. okay? Divorce is not an answer. If divorce is an answer in your vocabulary, you're watching the wrong videos. Go find somebody that's gonna endorse that because I'm not gonna do it for you, all right? Now, yes, we have been divorced. We understand what that's like, but the problem with divorce is that once you make that switch in your mind, it tends to come up again. It tends to be something that you see as you're out if you need it. And so that's why Mike's saying what he's saying. And if you want me to be perfectly clear with you, anybody who's watched this very long knows our background. Uh, my ex-wife divorced me because I didn't want the divorce. And I wanted to try and work it out. That's just who I was. And it's been a blessing. I'm not gonna say it wasn't a blessing, okay? But Brenda divorced her first husband because uh, he was abusive. And we're not going to get into the hows and the whys and the where's, okay? But so we He's speak from ex too. we speak from experience, all right? It's not like we're just saying, "Hey, bail." No. I'm not sa what I'm saying is, when we entered, we physically entered this uh, marriage. We literally told each other, "We will never bring up divorce," and we have not. Okay, it has never been an option. We have always looked to work it out. And don't think we've never had huge fights. We've had huge, huge fights. screaming fights. And we came back together because that's what we promised we would do. And we men are w men of our word. And if you can't be a man of your word, then maybe you should have thought about that before because now you're there. Step it up. Same with you ladies. Now we don't encourage you to have screaming fights, no. but we're just being real with you. There has been a couple, not very many, but a couple yeah. and more than we're proud of, yeah. but it is what it is. Uh, it's so part of the process. You know, this this whole empty nesting thing brings out a bunch of insecurities you may not have even known that were there, right. to be honest. Because now you don't have the kids keeping you together. It's you and him. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying. 
So that brings us to number three. You need to remember change is good. Mm, okay. Yep. A lot of people are stuck in this mindset that I can't change. All right. Why are we, for instance, in Savannah, Georgia? Well, ah, because we want to move. You want to move to Savannah? No, we don't want to move to Savannah per se. We have three places we're looking at. Savannah is one of them. I already interviewed for a job. Why would we want to go? Because change is good. Mm. It is our time now. It is our time. We love the boys and this will give them a huge opportunity to go stay and vacation other place, another place without the cost of lodging, without with somebody who can show them around where, where they're not wasting a bunch of time and actually utilizing that time with family. All right. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again right now, guys, especially your kids are not who you want them to be. Typically, they're who you are. My yeah. kids need to know they can go out and do anything because dad led the way. Dad set the example. And we've been telling our kids from the time they were young that we were not going to live in Montana when they were older. We never planned to be no. the people that were, I mean, at one point I thought we would be the, the snowbird type that left for nine months and came back for the summer. But that's just really not something that we feel no. like we want to do at this point. Maybe someday, I don't know. But right Today's now is just, we're just ready to be, you know, out of our area because our area has had some really tough things that we've been through there. Yeah. And honestly, it's holding us back in some way. Sorry, I keep getting bugs almost in my mouth. I don't mouth. know if there are no Sam's or Nats <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, um, but yeah it's, it's, it's so important for us to take that next step and move to the next level so that we can be the examples, especially Mike, because we have all boys. Um, take the risk to do what we can to help them. So anything else? Uh, just a side note, if you want to follow kind of what we're doing, uh, I have a TikTok channel and it's, I think it's the sedated or the sedated man. No, it's the remarriage. Oh, no, oh, she's right. No, yeah. it was, yeah, it's remarriage, remarriage Academy and you can follow my TikToks as I kind of walk you through what we're doing just on this trip it has nothing. It is part of the remarriage but it also kind of walks you through our process and how we're picking to go somewhere. Yeah, it's really been cool. So that's all we have for you today. We hope that you like this and you got something out of it. We'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to hear, you know, what you have to say about this, if it's helping you or not helping you, whatever. Give us a, a comment down below. Please like this and become a subscriber because we love our subscribers. And pretty soon here, we're gonna start rewarding our subscribers. So anyways, on that note, we thank you so much for being here and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.